There's so much that we want to understand with this trial and other trials. What's the most pressure, you know, pressing issues that we still don't know? Once you're vaccinated or once you've been infected, can you still transmit it if you're exposed to it? Or is that what we're trying to find out? The key thing we're trying to understand in this study is what kind of immune response, what flavor of the immune response protects people against reinfection. We know that reinfection, once you've had COVID once, is unusual. It's not impossible. People are certainly reinfected again, but it's not very common. If we can understand what type of immune response is, is conferring that protection, we can use that information to better design vaccines, to better and more rapidly test vaccines and better design treatments. Professor, I noticed the virus you'll be using in the study is the original strain yeah. from Wuhan, China. Why choose that rather than one of the newer variants that we still are trying to learn more about? Sure. So I think it's really important that we're starting these studies for the first time with the Wuhan strain. It is the strain we have the most information about, we know the most about, and we can therefore be confident to design a safe study. There are many discussions underway to think about whether in subsequent studies we could use a different variant uh, and one of the newer, more emerging variants. But I think to start with, we need to start with the strain we know the most about. Doctor, I had uh, you know, Lyme disease many times as a kid. Um, and at the time, since I'm so old, they just thought, hit it with doxycycline and you're good. However, there are obviously lingering effects, um, really bad uh, lingering issues with that. Are we going to see the same with COVID? And will you understand more about it after this trial? <laughs> So this trial won't specifically look at long COVID, which is clearly a problem with some people who have COVID infection. We are confident that the risks of long COVID after this study are very small. We will be recruiting young, healthy volunteers who have had a very mild or even asymptomatic first infection and have no signs of long COVID after their first infection. It would be very unlikely that after the very low dose of virus we're going to be giving them that they would have long-term consequences in this study. Can, can you understand through the study what it means for vaccines and whether we'll, you know, how often we'll need a, a vaccine renewal? Exactly. So this study, once we've identified the type of immune response that makes it impossible for people to be reinfected in our challenge study, we can then use that information to then test vaccines because we then know that what we want the vaccines to do is induce exactly that kind of immune response. We can then look at durability, how long vaccines induce that response for, and indeed how long that response is induced for after natural infection. So is it likely that we then get a, a, a one booster every year, maybe something that covers this as well as the flu and other issues? This information generated from this study will address exactly that kind of question. Yes, absolutely.